You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for December 15th, 2017. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the Cornfield Resistance, where you know we're not bigots because one of our fake sponsors is a Jew. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. We are making reference to the wife of the failed Senate candidate from Alabama, Roy Moore, who trotted her bona fides out on stage about why I'm not a bigot. Uh, and they, they cut her off just before she started talking about the coloreds, I'm pretty well, yeah, sure. And she thought she was being smart uh, and letting everybody know what was going on. Yeah. That's yep. what's fascinating about this. That that that, that we really have um, encountered at last the, uh, in public, and you and I know all about this, mm-hmm. the tribe that mm-hmm. rubs shit in its hair. Uh, in case the some listeners don't recognize the reference, that is uh, a, a something I coined a long time ago. A, an analogy is a group of people sitting in a cave together who take up the habit of rubbing their own shit in their hair and making patterns in their hair and sculpting their hair into beautiful towers, Eiffel Towers and and four-masted schooners and models of the wreck of the Hesperus out of their hair. And they all admire each other. My God, that's a mighty fine look you've got going on your hair there, Phil. Uh, what's that? Well, that's, that's, a, that's a ghost writer. That's brilliant. And they don't ever realize after a while that it's shit in their hair and it smells horrible until they go out in public and deal with, you know, normal people who are completely horrified by the fact these people have shit in their hair and don't seem to realize how awful it is. And that's how you can spot them, because there are Republicans who are smart enough to realize that they have to hide their bigotry. They have Donald Trump has given them a lot of permission to be public assholes about pretty much everything. But when the national spotlight swings onto your state or your race or whatever crappy thing it is you're trying to do, it becomes necessary to at least pretend not to be an uh, antebellum mm-hmm. racist assholes. And they can't do it because they've been told for 25, 30 years that the voices in their head are true and that their bigotry is or, actually patriotic. And they Bible shouldn't be ashamed days. about it. Or both. Yes, it's yeah. all biblical. Yes, white, white Christian evangelical Southern conservative men – are God's chosen people, and there's a long list of, of of tears below that. And as long as we maintain that white evangelical Southern Christian conservative order, everything will be fine. Everything fell apart when uh, feminazis and the coloreds and liberals and basically everyone else that the Nazis hated, you know, intellectuals and and, and minorities and uh, socialists and labor unions uh, started getting equal rights. That's when and, everything and went to hell. Roy Moore essentially so are, said as much as that. That's the amazing thing. Yes, Out he did. loud. I mean, he said. Yes, he did. You know, our family stuck together back in slave days. That was a good old days. You know, and and you know, that was it. So, mm-hmm. uh, and and there is a market for that in politics in Alabama. That is the amazing thing. Uh, and this is not a process of the of Republicans mm-mm. turning into this. This is the process of the makeup they wear in public to hide their horrific. Look, well, so they're, they're I monstrous sure, souls. I want, I'm going to stop you right there because we got to move on and get this podcast done okay. in an hour. But yes, uh, this is not. This is one wing of the of the Republican Party. There are other wings. That, what, we don't need to sort of paint them all with a real wide brush. But this uh, is the wing of the Republican Party in the South that the entire RNC depended upon. And so there, there is a complicit, uh, a complicity, I guess that's the word to use, uh, of the entire Republican Party with this kind of politics, and they are responsible for it. Yes, there uh, is. And and yeah, they, without this group of people, I saw, they but never win an election class, again. I saw seventeen instances after the Alabama election on Tuesday of people saying Trumpism uh-huh. is dead, Trumpism is over, Trumpism can be beaten. This is tr- that what Roy Moore was the bigotry and the uh, blindness to history and uh, all of that is being painted as Trumpism rather than as Republican politics or or Bannonism or the Bannonism same thing. It's this Bannon. populist, uh, it's racist is that is the Republican base voter and the folks that will not accept that in the mainstream media are going to hear from me. Uh, 
Well, would you like me to step out of the way while you address Steve <laughs> yeah, Schmidt Steve directly? Yeah, Steve Schmidt was or... one of the ones that I, you know, and he's he's uh, verified and I'm not, so he doesn't have to read my tweets. But I left him six or seven explaining right. to him that, no, you don't get to call it Trumpism. Uh, and it is his lifeboat. Mm-hmm. I've said this before. Burn the lifeboats. You, you want to go back to a time where you can elect a Marco Rubio clone, some some used car salesman with a good haircut, uh, white guy, who mm-hmm. is still going to vote to take away my children's health insurance, who is still going to vote for tax cuts for billionaires, who's still going to support the end of net neutrality for no other reason than the base wants to hurt Obama. And, I mean, mm-hmm. this is just the party that you have. Uh, so, yeah. What I thought we'd do today, Drift Glass, is let's do the news roundup first. And then uh, we have some letters to read this week because we've heard from so many of you and we're really, really grateful to you for your support of our podcast work as we uh, deal with losing half our income to the Amazon cancellation. So thank you for uh, your moral support and your financial support as we're uh, figuring out what to do with that. Uh, But yeah, let's start with the news roundup Mm -hmm. and then because that gets us discussing a lot of things and then we can move on. Okay. Sure. Uh, may, may I mention just before we begin that, I would like to extend my thanks and gratitude to the fine you podcast of Waz Speaks. W O S S P E K S. Waz Speaks, who invited me into their house, made me feel right at home, let me take my shoes off, put them up on, let me swear, uh, let me do anything I wanted. And we had a wonderful time. They, they, he was a great host. Uh, he's in, on one coast, his sound editors in another. <laughs> Fortunately, I get to sleep with my sound editors. So, like, I'm way ahead of the game. Um, But it was a a wonderful time, and it's part of a a complex of other podcasts, and I was delighted and honored to be their guest, and I'll probably pay them a return visit if I didn't scuff their furniture up too much with my big old feet. And it's WOS, W-O-S, and it speaks with an A. You didn't put the A in there. S-P-E-A-K-S, right? Well, I dropped the Uh, A for, you know, because I'm a street credit. We want people to be able to find them. I like to get And yeah, they are... Was speaks, mm-hmm. uh, and he's on Twitter too. W o s s p e a k s. Yeah. So uh, we will find uh-huh. out whether that episode has posted yet. I don't know whether it has, but I, I think it has. And and here's the part that was most delightful because uh, mm-hmm. we come from very different backgrounds. But he, he wanted to. S- at least take a chunk of time That's to talk nice. about Mr. Robot. So how do you not love a guy who wants you to come to his house and, and right. bullshit up Mr. Robot right. and, with and, him? You and know, how come did he find out about – because he found out about you through your blog. It wasn't through the podcast, right? He did. You know, he, he found out through me uh, about me ah. through Mr. Charles Pierce. Uh, because it's it's a he he's a there's a whole sports side to what he does and uh, Charlie Pierce is is one of those guys who writes brilliantly about politics and sports. There's a lot of crossover between the two, so he follows Charlie Pierce. Charlie Pierce occasionally, although not recently enough, Charlie <laughs> um, links to me and points in my direction. And uh, uh, so he sort of found me through that venue and has been a listener of our podcast uh, ever since. And dropped me a line and said, "Come on, come on over, dude. Let's let's talk for an hour." And I was oh, good. thrilled, and good. we had a, we had a blast. It was a great. All right. Yeah. Well, yes, we thank you for that, and we will find the link to the episode that Dirk Glass appears in to talk about Mr. Robot, which is over now, sadly, uh, yes. for another season. But it is renewed for season yes. four, and yeah, you were right. But I was you right. Were right. I was right. You were right. I was right. The the, the well, guy, no, and I told we this can't to my spoil wife. It. I'm um, sorry, the... we can't spoil it. Oh no no. Well, uh, let me just put it this way. I told my wife a certain thing would right. be he the did. Chekhov's he told gun. It, he said that, and that's not uh, a spoiler. There's a Chekhov's gun, and it appears, no. and you were right, and that's enough said. Okay. Yes. That's yes. the important thing. The important thing is I'm right. So our <laughs> no podcast spoilers. is now over. Thanks okay. to our sponsor, and we'll be on our way. All right. News <laughs> Roundup. News All right. Roundup. It's a wonderful season of the show. News Roundup. Uh, the net neutrality, uh, uh, bye-bye. That's Except right. that dozens of states are suing, so we might be able to hold it off the until the 2018 suing elections. Is to get an injunction uh, to stop it until yeah. they settle it, and yeah. with so many states suing and figuring out where uh, they have standing in the court and which court is going to do it, that can take months. So uh, it's not over. Yeah. that's what I have to say. It's not over. Okay. No, no, and that well, it's also the reason why the Trump administration is trying yeah. to destroy the judiciary and pack it full of lunatics and 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 toadies because the the thing that is stopping them from absolutely rolling over this country like a a, a uh, despotic tide never to be rolled back are are the cops and the courts and so they're trying to get rid of law enforcement that would be the FBI and they're trying to get rid of the courts and that ain't gonna fly. Uh, Heather Heyer's killer was charged with first-degree murder. 
Uh, they likely have a tape of him circul- they have uh, circling some the crowd sort of in his car. What I've heard uh, is that they have some sort of indication that uh, he drove he drove around the crowd with some sort of premeditated plan to do damage. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, and her mother has to hide has to hide her grave from neo Nazi defacers. Yep. Because that's where we live now. That's our country now. Um, Doug Jones proves that the GOP, uh, can, uh, the GOP, are cool when it comes to their candidates with racists and xenophobes and theocrats and LGBT haters and actual Nazis and sexual predators and serial liars and just plain Gomert level morons. Yeah, uh, and did I mention <laughs> actual Nazis? Uh, uh, yes, but they're not quite there yet with the pedophiles even though this week also was the week that a judge told denny hastert that he could never ever be alone again with anyone under the 18 because he is a quote Mm -hmm. serial child molester denny hastert of course was the republican speaker of the house uh within living memory so they damn near got away with it i mean this is how close they came they came within a few thousand votes of electing a, uh, an alleged pedophile and sexual predator. Take that out of the mm-hmm. equation mm-hmm. and he wins. Yeah. That's the problem. The problem is, you know, what's the democratic strategy going forward? Well, first, you got to get someone who's both, uh, both a, a racist and a theocrat and a homophobe and a pedophile, and then you have a shot at taking them down. That's not a winning strategy. The, the, the problem with the party is not um, Roy Moore. The problem with the party is it produces monsters like Roy Moore, and that, that, that their behavior, as evidenced by the election of Donald Trump, is totally cool with mm-hmm. about 60 million people in this country. That's the actual problem. And that's the problem that we let have me take that. Let me take the next one uh, because next that's an DNC. answer to that. Uh, the the DNC and Moneyball. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, the movie Moneyball talks about getting the person on base. That he the whole uh, understanding of what makes a great baseball player changed because of Moneyball. That the, what you want is just somebody that can get on base, get on first base, and you can win. And the National Party's job, the National Party being the DNC, their job is to get our voters to the polls. Period. It is not to mm-hmm. to negotiate. Uh, you know, minimum wage policies. It is it is to get our voters right. to the polls. It is to recruit candidates who will win. And it is to fund those yes. efforts. And that's it. And they are doing that. And I think I think we have to realize, oh wow, in Virginia they did that. And in Alabama yes, they, did. they did that. And when it was Better for the NAACP yes, to do the uh, ground game. The NAACP did the ground game. Uh, NAACP sent a mm-hmm. handwritten postcard to every single member who had voted, uh, who was a registered voter. That's an amazing accomplishment. Uh, so Indivisible, NAACP, a lot of other groups got the voters to the polls. And that's what we have to do. So I I agree with you that this was close. This was way too close and it shows you the depravity yep. of the Republican Party in Alabama that it was that close. Uh, the reason that people came out, however, uh, in my personal opinion, as someone who lived in Alabama during the Roy Moore, these Chief Justice Roy Moore days, um, the reason it, uh-huh. it uh, succeeded, the reason the Democrats won, is because enough voters knew well in advance who Roy Moore was, that he was a loudmouth bigot, and that yes. was enough. And the the pedophilia was just one more layer of awful on a truly awful guy that people mm-hmm. did not already did not want to represent them. So, uh, yeah, I, I yep. think there was a lot of motivation. Um, and also that this all of these elections are turning out to be a proxy war against Trump. Um, but not Trumpism, mm-hmm. folks. It's the Republican Party. Nope. There And as I said to nope. Steve Schmidt on Twitter, Donald Trump would not be president were it not for the complicity of elected representatives elected to Congress by the Republican Party. OK. Yeah. I'm, uh, in the new year, I'm going to make war on <laughs> yes. pronouns. Uh, I've decided yeah. my, my no, war no on we, we man. <laughs> Uh, there, the, mm-hmm. and, and you hear all across yeah. the board, you hear everyone from David like Axelrod that. to to uh, mm-hmm. to Matthew Dowd saying, we are this right. country that doesn't mm-hmm. pass gun laws. We are the, no, no, it's not we, motherfucker. It's the Republican Party. And it, it and it's not the people. It's not the system. It's not the Congress. 
And I think it really – it's a very cheap and easy thing to do, especially when you have access to Twitter, yeah. which all of our listeners do or most of them do, which is every time you see someone you know, promiscuously mm-hmm. use the word we or the American people mm-hmm. or the Congress or the system to describe something that Republicans are doing and that we on this side of the aisle are desperately trying to oppose, yeah. Yeah. call them out on it. Tell David Axelrod, what the fuck are you talking about? We, we aren't doing this. Mm-hmm. The Republican mm-hmm. and, Party and is doing this. And don't worry about whether David Period Axelrod reads that because everyone is reading that no. who looks at David Axelrod's tweet and you're doing point. it for an audience, not for the person that is clearly trying to cover up for his audience. Mostly it's a he, except, except for Peggy Noonan, who right. is in a class by herself. <laughs> but yes, uh, on Twitter particularly, you are – this is why I, I made six tweets. I wrote six tweets again, uh, toward Steve Schmidt. was not thinking Steve Schmidt is going to read right. this because he's probably not. But everybody no. who looks at Steve Schmidt's tweet about uh, it's the coalition of the decent. No, and I right. won't no, let him get away with no, that because the, not. the decent Republicans just decided that child rape wasn't good. We have a president that right. has to be told that Nazis aren't good, okay? We have yes. repeatedly. Uh, repeatedly, because he forgets every now and then. Republican that. Party, yeah. these decent, you know, they're in the coalition of the decent not wanting uh, Roy Moore to win who voted en masse to take away health care from 13 million people, 22 million people, yes. 40 million people, whatever yes. it is, and who are happy to see the and deficit party. go up so that they can cut Medicare. Enough. Enough. Right. And this whole and this whole we got to cut taxes to stimulate the economy is is a strategy yes. for recession. You you acquire debt. This is what Barack Obama had to do dur- yeah. in 2008, 2009. Uh, it was because the economy was in free fall that we had. And the, these yeah. same people were yeah. saying, cut everything, cut everything. Cut all government spending, which, of yep. course, plunged us into a depression because Republicans create deficits in order to have a reason to cut programs they despise. They don't care about deficits otherwise. That's what these decent, decent exactly. the coalition of the yep. decent, uh, won't tell you, is they want yep. to take health care away from poor people. They hate it that poor people have health care. They should be cast out and and out of the charmed circle of life and, and go fend for yourselves. Our donors – are the people we serve, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. not the American people. And and here's how – and, and you know, it works because the the goddamn quit with the fucking both-siderism shit finally yes, got it did. under Chuck Todd's Yes, it did. It, it, whatever the boiling point is for enough people mm-hmm. just mocking mm-hmm. him openly on social media saying – for fuck's sake, yep. Todd, Todd yep. stop it. Just stop it. I, and he had, and he pre, he starts to preemptively say, I'm sure all the people out there in liberal land will say both sides do it, but blah, blah, blah. And, and mm-hmm. he, clearly it got to him to the point where he had to, he had to at mm-hmm. least get mad about mm-hmm. it in public, mm-hmm. which delights me. Um, so this war on yeah. pronouns that I'm now announcing, I think can yeah. yield some fruit because it's so simple. Just every time you hear someone use the word we or the people or the American people or the public or whatever, some group pronoun in which we're not a part, we have nothing to do with it. In fact, we're, we oppose what they're doing. You know, let's remember Hillary Clinton won by, by three million, votes. million yeah. votes. We – I'm sorry, by three million votes. We yeah. are not in this. They are doing this and it's really important that we draw those tight distinctions and eventually maybe we can change their speech patterns. And I, as a writer, I believe from speech Absolutely. and words come action. So speaking of speech and words causing action, let's move on to our next series of words, which would say that Roy that's, Moore still hasn't conceded the race. That's hilarious. He's waiting on God. He's waiting on God to let the process play out. You know what? Mm-hmm. God already did his job or her job, and it involved a whole lot of African-American people, especially women, coming out and a whole yes. bunch of Republicans sitting at home. Let's remember that the basic equation, the basic chemical equation for the electorate has not changed. Republicans are still – horrible people. But when Democrats recruit good candidates and they register and they turn out, and turn out they can win. overturns corruption. So if if people are messing with the election, you can we proved that in Virginia that gerrymandering is not necessarily the end of everything if you have high turnout. So no. uh get your voters no. to the polls. Yes, that is the that is the point. And uh you want to read that I, other part of your Roy Moore statement? 
<laughs> I do. I, I do want to mention. I do want to mention that gerrymandering yeah. oh, is a problem. The, the the graph I saw about Alabama, which was if the same turnout had been applied mm -hmm. at the congressional level, um, Republicans yeah. would have won yep. six out of seven seats because all the districts are drawn so that all the minor, all the black people, all the minorities, all the liberals are in one. Mm -hmm congressional district and 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 they've weirdly drawn all the lines so that every place else in the state just makes it into the the category and is is uh, a solid republican seat and it's on purpose they do that they do it because they need to cheat to win uh but when they lose it turns out that even a loudmouth cowboy second amendment gun love and brandishing son of a bitch is actually a whiny, sore-ass uh -huh. loser titty baby who can't yep. stand failing. Um, and, you know, just like the guy who wanted to be his boss, uh, Donald Trump, who throws tantrums uh -huh. in the White House apparently every other day, uh, they're just they, – they haven't got a glass jaw. They can't take – publicity they can't take pushback they can't take losing they freak out they don't know what to do because once they start losing and 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 the law and the and walls and rallies start mm -hmm. closing in they have mm -hmm. no place to go so speaking of that steve bannon <laughs> god loves steve bannon uh his whole belly flopping into, into an empty swimming pool strategy <laughs> is paying big dividends uh nothing fails like failure and steve bannon has pretty much uh, in the parlance of uh, Scaramucci, I believe, yeah, uh, yeah. sucked his own dick uh, all he over the no place. He has no friends in his Washington detriment. today, that's now, for sure. Yep. And and you look at this sort of creepy, you know, carbuncle on the ass of America uh, who would love to be Karl Rove to Donald Trump's George Bush. And it's like, I, I mean, I thought I, Rove was a horror, a horror show and, and George Bush was a was a nightmare of a president. But that's how far this group of mm -hmm. people have devolved in eight years, is that now it's mm -hmm. Trump and Bannon. You know, this, this fucking blogger with Mercer money and, and delusions of grandeur who loves um, a triumph of the will and is a fascist, is an open racist, you know, asshole, looks like a disheveled drunk, <laughs> I, I believe, as someone said it, uh, and, and thought he could just yep. take the party wherever he wanted it to go. And it turns that's out right. the world doesn't work that way. Um, the At the other end of the... Uh, at the Pennsylvania Avenue, sober lawmakers like Adam Schiff uh, are calmly pointing out that the evidence against Donald Trump about yeah. Russia is yeah. pretty damning, quote unquote. Uh, he's the ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee. And right now, the, the House of Representatives under the Republicans is desperately trying to change the fucking subject, trying to make, you know, Robert Mueller the subject, trying to make an FBI texting his girlfriend the subject. Anything other than the fact that the Donald Trump administration is riddled with corrupt, lying, traitorous scumbags. Well, because and it's all the Republican it's, Party. it's all they coming. I mean, you cannot argue with a guilty plea that something's not happening. No. And so, Two guilty well, yeah, pleas. well, that's Two what I mean. Pleas. It's just it's, it's popping up. And and <laughs> yeah, I got into it with someone today on Twitter who who was just started like boiling down to it just boiled down to him just name calling. And so I changed the subject back to, uh, you know, real interesting about those indictments and guilty pleas, huh? And so what, 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 did, no, where does he go? Where does he go with that? Uh, you know, the, he says, well, first of all, he says, I'm a Democrat, you know but I, I don't really care who yeah. wins in terms of team blue, team red. Right. right. <laughs> just like most, just Democrats like most Democrats don't care. If women Democrats on Twitter win. for their looks. Yeah. And uh, don't care who wins. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he did. No, he did. He did yeah. both. We sides see you. Them. It was both sides. So of he does. he's an independent. No, no. It, I, I, we predict. I, bet, I just we, bet. It is so easy to predict these guys yeah. these days, though. I'm an independent. I'm not a Republican. Well, and they they they, yep. they have four lines. You know, their entire script could fit Absolutely. on a Bazooka Joe bubblegum wrapper. It's what about it's, and, what and about and Hillary? And, and what about Obama? Right. What about Hillary? What about Benghazi? And I'm I'm right. both sides. I'm an independent. You know, boom. And then they run out then of things say, to say yeah, and they insult you. Go away. It's your hat. Because I have a pussy hat on on my Twitter avatar, mm -hmm. they want to go after the hat, and I'm groupthink because I'm wearing a hat, and <laughs> and you know, no talk about MAGA and Eagles and all their all their Twitter streams look exactly alike. No. <laughs> they all look exactly the same. They all love and Jesus Eagles. and their wife. American Eagles and flags. And Eagles and, and, and I love a America. Of I'm a Trump dressed like and, and, Christopher Columbus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he's a Democrat because. Now, I changed my mind mid-sentence. I'm independent now because I was losing that argument. <laughs> yeah. 
And now I think I can change my mind because yeah. that's what we get to do on our side. We get to put on different masks and pretend that we're different people. No, like the kitten who is hiding on the tile floor by putting yeah. her paws over her eyes. Mm -hmm. We see you. <laughs> you think you're hiding, but you're not hiding. You're just a fucking buffoon. You're a, you're a, you're, you're, you're a, uh, no, well, I'm sorry. and, and I, one woman out of, uh, came back to him on Twitter. I stopped talking to him, but one woman came back and said, wow, you yeah. really need uh, a bunch of lies to look in the mirror every morning. You know, you need to tell yourself this stuff. And it's absolutely true. Uh, so Adam Schiff did what what a good, mm -hmm. uh, clear communicator does. He very he put it in very simple language, simple, easy to use language uh, floating around in, in one of our timelines is. A reminder that uh, when you're describing the Democratic Party, the Democratic right. Party cares right. if you live or die. Right. Republicans mm -hmm. don't. That's a very simple message and, I, and one that I think that we can put on a bumper sticker and slap on any vehicle that we own. Uh, Adam Schiff says, look, it's very simple. The Russians offered help. The campaign accepted help. The Russians gave help and the president made full use of a, that B, help. C, D. It, yep. That's collusion. Yep. Yeah. And a collusion and then obstruction mm -hmm. because you didn't want anyone to find out that you had no intention of winning, that you wanted to cash out on this and you were going to make a big bank on this and suddenly you won. And then all of your little nefarious bullshit that no one would have known about has become mm -hmm. high crimes mm -hmm. and misdemeanors and you're going to jail and your whole fucking family is going to jail. Uh, Tavis Smiley He's is gone. suspended. There's, there's uh, different things happening, too. Uh, yes. There's a lot of, well, and that's, it is. This, it's hard yeah. to keep track of. It's like, it's like the biggest goddamn advent calendar <laughs> of is. sexual predators. And yeah. just, and, every and day whenever is, see oh, a look, guy Russell trending Simmons on Twitter, I assume that it's because he's been fired for sexual assault, which is not fair. It you know? really is. I used to think it was probably because of a sports trade. A sporting club yeah, has traded right. a player to another sporting club, or perhaps they have an injury of some kind, which is still true. But now, more often than mm -hmm. not, it's, oh, guess who's out? Because they uh, they decided they used their position of power and, and influence to uh And, uh, and Michelle, Michelle Goldberg or on – Or make uh, their lives miserable. She was on Hardball last night, and she yes, was she was. Great. And she but was she, great. She pointed out what she I pointed great. out, which is huh? this isn't a proxy war against Trump. This is the war that Trump put us in. And – the uh, mm -hmm. subjugated rage of women that is being played out now with people coming forward against their harassers. We're finding out, you know, this happened yep. to nearly everybody. It's not it's not one out yes. of four. It's everybody has had some no. experience with this. And so, as yeah. I said before, uh, if Hillary had won and we were working toward uh, parity in some way in the political process of, OK, we're going to have women presidents now and we're going to work to make things better for women in the workplace this way. Great. <laughs> women and children and children. Great. That's yeah. where we're at. We yep. have a battleground now with a woman president to do that. But we woke up after Election Day and found out, no, we're on this, we're in this minefield uh, that wants to kill us. Right. And the war right. on women is raging around us. And so mm -hmm. we're going to fight back to, to preserve the lives of our children and ourselves. And we're going to play right. this game now. This is going to happen. And, and I don't think it's, mm -hmm. I particularly don't think that Harvey Weinstein Dean was going to continue to get away with this. It was such an open secret. And s at some point that balloon was going to uh -huh. pop no matter who was president. But a lot of these other ones, uh, once the floodgates opened with the Harvey Weinstein thing happened because of the rage that many of us feel, most of us feel about misogyny mm -hmm. electing Donald Trump. Well, and she she put it yeah. really well, well on Harvey. After, I mean, after she Chris was, Matthews left, this is talk. what I <laughs> yes, yeah, that was the thing. He was clearly going to step out of the way gonna, because you know, I really want to hear all, from you she, on this. Thanks, Chris. I think you paid right. me to be on here. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> yeah. And then his producer, yeah. <laughs> you know, shot him with a tranquilizer and knocked him out for ten minutes so she could actually fucking talk. And and it this is where honestly I, I'm a writer. I'm a writer by trade. That's what I do. And words on the page are are I, I'm in love with words on the page, but. There's something about the audio and visual medium that you can't you can't replicate for in terms of passion, you know, uh, and and her absolute passion and and fury at, ex, at explaining the the sense of degradation and humiliation and rage women feel 
that that a, a, someone who's just like the person that abused them has been made the most powerful man in the world by people who yep. knew he was doing it yep. and laughed about it and did and, fucking and he care. and he now gets that, off that this, on his immunity. She said that he gets off on his immu- immunity right. that everybody else is held up to some standard and. He doesn't. He doesn't have to worry about that. And the question is, how much longer and that's does he what not his have base... to worry about that? Yeah. Oh, well, exactly. that's what his base yeah. dreams of. I mean, it, it, their fantasy is they get to they get to yep. call Kristen yep. Gillibrand a whore, and and laugh about it and make her cry and then walk away mm-hmm. from it or maybe get laid. You know that they get to get away with this shit because that has been the hallmark of. The, yep. the patriarchy, the white male patriarchy. <laughs> I'm speaking as a white male. You're mansplaining of the patriarchy, Driftless. The, the, I am mansplaining. But the, the whole thing was, I get to get away with everything. And that's what Donald Trump offered to, yep. beyond this fucking wall and, and bullshit taxes and everything else. Yep. It was, look, look at me. I'm a, I'm a filthy mm-hmm. old pervert who pretends to be rich, who mm-hmm. bought my wife on eBay. And now I get to get away with everything. I can eat anything I want. I can say anything I want. I can rub my ass in the, in the press's face and they'll fucking take it. And, and isn't yeah. that the life yeah. you want to have? You know, he's selling Trump, the Trump game, the Trump lifestyle. But now it's yeah. like yep. political. You know, it's like now we get mm-hmm. to do anything we want. And now not only do we get to do anything we want, but it's fueled by this 25 years of crackpot right wing media telling these people that there's a secret conspiracy mm-hmm. to take their shit away from them. And now we can have our fucking revenge. And, and so what I would ask people to think about is imagine what would happen. Because the Harvey Weinstein thing, the, the article in the New York Times especially, was about mm-hmm. the complicity mm-hmm. machine. This entire infrastructure that was set up to make sure these, that, that he was never mm-hmm. held accountable for anything. That everyone was in on it. Everybody knew about it. Everybody turned turned a blind eye because he had so much power that, that they couldn't hold him accountable and he would destroy their careers if they did. So there was this entire mechanism built up to make sure that people like that were never, ever found out or turned out in public. There is an identical complicity mm-hmm. machine in the media. It's a political complicity machine. It is to make sure that the people in front of the camera, the people who should not be in front of the camera, the people who control the message, the people who have let this shit happen for 25 years, who turned a fucking blind eye to the Republican Party turning into the American fascist party for 25 goddamn years, never are held accountable for what they said and did. And they get away with it because they own the cameras, and they own the, the microphones and they own the printing presses. So imagine if a monkey wrench could be tossed mm-hmm. into that mechanism as well. Imagine what would happen if they had to actually put someone on television who would tell Joe Scarborough, mm-hmm. I've had it with your mm-hmm. shit, Joe. I've had it with your shit. You're, you and your whole fucking panel are liars. You know, these preening assholes who sit around and say, yeah, Joe, you're right, Joe. That's cool, Joe. Let's go through the history of how we got here. That's the thing that, that, that they rob from us, that this is the liberal secret weapon. We remember the past, and their getting away with this depends entirely on them and the people around them and the people who control the cameras never talking about what happened yesterday or the day before or the day before that. And as long as they can do that, they can control the future. They can control the present and the future. I'm stealing from Orwell, but why not steal from the best? But once you get some people inside the perimeter who are willing to do to that complicity machine what those brave women were willing to do to the Weinstein complicity machine, it will fall apart because it, because it can't stand – it can't stand the light of day. It cannot stand examination. That's why they don't have liberals on panels because in 90 seconds, we would make Joe Scarborough or whoever else look like a fool. Anyway. Yeah, go right ahead. Shall we move on? Uh, the tax monstrosity is uh, rolling through Congress right now, the Republican Congress. Let me correct mm-hmm. myself. The Republican Congress right now. There's a whole bunch of people who are saying, I'll vote no if, I'll vote no if. Yeah. You know, Marco Rubio at this moment is saying he's going to stand on principle. Yeah, Marco, I don't know if you know what that means, uh, but I've never <laughs> seen you stand up for anything. I've never seen a principle you weren't willing to sell out because your donors told you. So I'm sure, you know, you'll, you'll wave your hand and talk about, uh, my my great commitment to the poor because you have your eye on the White House at some point in the future, um, and how brave you were to stand up to Donald Trump, and and the status quo and fought for child uh, tax credits, but you'll cave because Rubio always caves because that's what Marco Rubio does. Um, as I mentioned, Danny Hastert has been ordered never to be alone with anyone under eighteen because as a Republican former Speaker of the House, 
uh, he is also a serial child molester. Um, and, you know, go down the list, man. Go down the list of powerful Republicans from Newt Gingrich to Denny Hastert and take a look at, and, and then look and then watch in awe as people pretend not to know why mm-hmm. the party got mm-hmm. to be what it is today. They're fucking shocked. I, there's a, an article that I'm, I'm wrapping up a, a post on um, from Charlie Sykes, who apparently gets to have a, a column in the New York Times these days. And he describes, and I, I will use one sentence from that article, where he talks about it may be it may be worthwhile charting the party's descent to this moment. Really? So I'm I'm, I'm I, I put on my seatbelt. I go, okay, Charlie Pierce is going to tell us how the fuck we got to mm-hmm. Trump and Roy Moore. Guess where history begins uh, for Charlie Sykes? 2015. It's it's a it's a it's a play in four, it's a tragedy <laughs> in four acts. Literally, in Act One, the curtain opens to reveal a god of golden <laughs> I was right. And, and then I'm like, well, I don't need to read any more because I know what you're doing. And I know that the fucking I New York Times right. don't let you I do it. Right. And it and of course you were. Because of course it's predictable. Because if we extend the timeline backwards even two years, then Charlie Sykes yep. becomes yep. part of the problem. And then his fucking yep. book doesn't get pimped yep. all over MSNBC because suddenly he's a hero. No, 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 no. That's that's why God has put liberals on this earth to to carry this, this is exactly particular burden. What I said, to, to, though, to to um, Schmidt as well, which is, look, if you are really it, serious about this, if you're really serious about coalition of the decent, switch parties. But they MSNBC won't have you on anymore because you're not an apostate. Apparently, that's the drama you need to have. So, well, people have switched parties. I don't know if you this blue gal. People have switched parties before. Um, yeah. Uh, it, it has happened many, many, many times. In fact, the senior senator from Alabama, uh, you might know this, yeah, uh, began yeah. life so, as a Democrat. Uh, you might remember Strom Thurmond was a Democrat before he, all the right. bigots left the Democratic Party and yes. became Republicans. You, you might want to know it that, Dinesh all the time. You know, that doesn't fit into your history books. Okay. But, uh, we have just a couple more things on the news roundup. Uh, yeah, Trump has – oh, Puerto Rico is still broken. No. And uh, CHIP has yep. still not been renewed. It has been temporarily funded, but uh, CHIP has to be renewed. It should be a clean bill. And uh, I understand, you know, I get I get these claims on Twitter that, well, you know, it's both sides. Democrats are holding it up, too. Democrats are holding it up because Republicans are putting things like cut Medicare into the bill and cut cha- makes significant right. changes to Obamacare. And I understand that uh, Republicans are trying to make... Medicare premiums go up for people who make more than half a million dollars. I don't care. CHIP needs to be clean. You re- you renew it as a clean bill. And anything messing with the other current health care system is not part of that bill. And Democrats, in my personal opinion, are absolutely right to cry foul on that and, and say, no, yes, we're not are. going to play games with children's health care. You just need to renew it. It's a moral issue, period. Um and we're not right. we're not going to do it's either a, and or. It's a, we're going to do a, both. It was and, a bipartisan bill before. I understand that, and that's great. And I'm glad that Orrin Hatch thought it was a good idea and voted for it initially, and that's wonderful. I do not trust Republicans on publicly funded health care as far as I can throw them. They need to pass a clean bill. That's it. And and it's up to Mitch McConnell to get it on the floor of the Senate and do it. So don't talk to me about both sides and Period. partisan bullshit. Do it. That's it. Mm-hmm. Trump has been asked to withdraw or reconsider two judicial nominees, and he has withdrawn them. Uh, turns out both of them, Brett Talley, yes, who has. has never tried a case, and <laughs> Jeff Mateer, who called yes. transgender children part of Satan's plan, are now not going to be on the bench. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the Republican senators who actually said, uh, this is a bridge too far. Okay. Roy Moore's wife no, does need no, to be on no, the can't, TV can't, more can't, because, the, you know, we hired really does. a Jew. Yes. Okay. A Jew. A Jew. A Jew. You know. <laughs> Ted Crockett is my <laughs> favorite Republican Alabamian. <laughs> Yeah, he's oh he's the guy. God, he's, he's the guy this Shelby week. Who I gotta say, yep. when you called me over, when you called me over and said, "Look at this, look at this," and you were you were hee-haw. cutting it up for I think Crooks and Liars. <laughs> look at this. His, just, he's straight oh, out of here. Oh, uh, gee- former Shelby County yeah. Commissioner turned Roy Moore spokesperson didn't know you could swear on something other than a Bible, and. Uh, <laughs> yeah. When it was when he was informed of that, he pretty much died on national television. What? Just stared at the camera. <laughs> It, the what, timing uh, of it really just, is comedic. It's very, very good. You should go see that. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was a joke. Exactly. I thought it was cut together no, to I, make I, him. I really no, he was just that stupid. Too, like, did the camera freeze? Because he just sat there staring no. into the camera, dead silence. What? 
<laughs> Jake Tapper said, you know you can well, swear on anything, no, right? Swore on a Bible. Bible. You swore on a Bible I because swore... you're Christian and you chose uh, a Bible. What? Oh, my God. Right. But you can get sworn in on a copy of Jugs. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It, it's relevant. And maybe that was it. And maybe he had see it in his mind. Wow, I could have been sworn in on a copy of Jugs. <laughs> Well, yeah, he had it in his mind that he had like like a four year old. Yeah. I got this perfect argument, and there's no rebuttal to it because you gotta be sworn on a Christian Bible. I got you, Jake Tapper, and it's like, no, you're just completely fucking wrong. There's no backup. It's like, oh, uh, Benghazi, you know, that's <laughs> chemtrails. That's yeah. that's yeah, yeah, okay, that's all they know how to do. Um, as we referred to earlier, Donald Trump is in fact a lonesome pig, part one million. Um. Because of uh, how he attacked Senator Christian Gildebrand and then lied about it and had his people go out and lie about it. Uh, Sarah Sanders Suckabee, uh, whatever her, her name actually is, Jesus Christ, this woman, I don't know what she's going to do after. I don't know what circus she's going to join and disappear after the Trump administration collapses. But just and, and here's the thing, the media that Charlie Pierce was saying this a year ago, fold your exactly. tents and leave the briefing. You're not going to learn room. anything from don't. this person. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And we won't forget how many men mm -hmm. on the left hated her last week because of her role yep. in ousting yep. Al Franken. And exactly. Then and she has more war. street cred than any other person in Congress in terms of standing up to sexual harassment in the military. Uh, and I, I understand people's feelings about Al Franken and how he's been shafted. I do get that. I certainly hope that Al Franken has plans for Roger <laughs> Roger Stone, uh, because that yes. needs to come out. This is this is a railroading. Uh, but you know what Dal Frank used to do before he was a senator? I'm not saying that he should leave public life. I'm not saying I agree that he should be gone. I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying that he used to be one of the yeah. pillars of Air America. Yeah. If I'm going to start a mm -hmm. liberal media empire, I'm going to be asking one of the smartest people I know who was on the right side of pretty much every issue, uh, who was the tr truly was the inheritor of Paul Wellstone's legacy and, and made that explicit that he wanted mm -hmm. to be You know like what Paul Wellstone would do? He would call up the Professional Left podcast and be on their podcast. He wouldn't be he wouldn't be on would. on, and, and you know, some bigger podcast. He'd pick a homegrown Midwestern podcast, podcast to be on. He would. Except we'd have to tell Paul Wellstone and Al Franken we I'd do, do a guest, guest so, for Al Franken. Sorry. Pound stand. I would. You would, wouldn't I would. you? You just, just would. Just You're just, just that sort of woman. All right. It, it just last. Here's a quarter. Go see Without a movie. Franken. I'm going to be doing the podcast. <laughs> now. Yeah. Yeah. Get yourself a soda. Give yourself a big orange and a. And a I'm going to pinch his butt. Big Let me and tell you. And go see, yeah. 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 And go see yeah. Lady Bird twice. Go ahead. It's on All me. right. Yeah, yeah. I grabbed his waist. <laughs> No, no, yeah. I didn't. All right. Uh, this week, uh, this week, David Brooks uh, finally he had his crying spell over the Republican Party being a shit pile, um, and he he wept great big showy tears. Oh my God! Oh, this ever happened? Then he got over that because he has to do that to you know you got to tag up on that base before you go on in, back into the the territory that he loves best, which is. Mm -hmm. Both sides do it. And he decided to call out the radicals on both sides because the radicals on both sides are screwing this country up, Lou Gal. Um, the 4% on the left who are radical are indeed as radical as the 85% mm -hmm. mm -hmm. on the right who are radical. And David Brooks sees this and knows that between the two of them, they they collectively <laughs> are the problem. And that's why he decided to bring Saul Alinsky to the table and just slap a copy of Saul Alinsky's book down and, and, and explain how – it's very popular on the left. It. This book, this I've never read it either. You know what I've read? <laughs> Everything by Ayn Rand. I have never fucking read Saul Alinsky's book. I don't know anybody who has. Um, I'm, there's a lot of good stuff in there, I'm told, about community organizing, which, which I agree with. But he really, really – he has no ability to survive outside of a both-siders ecosystem. So he has to find a place where he can not talk about the fact that the Republican Party is a fucking horror show – and that he was responsible, uh, uh, along with a whole bunch of other people like him in positions of power, in getting mm -hmm. it this fucked up this far. And so I'll just throw a dart at the dartboard and say radicals. <laughs> and, I, and and you know what? I will join Sean yeah. Hannity and Alex Jones by whipping out Saul Alinsky and making him the fucking issue. Um, I heard today that, uh, that the New York Times had been passed down to the third or fourth generation of, uh, uh -huh. of uh -huh. Schulzbergs. Uh, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that because I don't live in New York and I don't really care. But I know that, that daddy told his son a couple <laughs> of the rules, son. One is you can never, yeah, ever, yeah, ever yeah, fire David yeah. Brooks. Uh, and there's a bunch of other rules I'm sure that they learned. But there's certain rules about the New York Times you have to obey. And one is that never talk about the fact that David Brooks is wrong all the time. 
Um, and don't piss off Maureen Dowd because she does this thing that some of our readers like that we pay her for. And just don't ask a lot of questions about that. Um, the GOP has made it really, really clear that their next target is big cuts to Medicare, Medicaid, et cetera. They're coming after all the stuff yep. for the poor and the middle class. They're coming after it with big acts. They have to do it to pay for their giant tax cut. And they are absolutely shameless. And they can be certain that a big percentage of the media will not say, well, how is it that you cut taxes for rich people and created and borrowed money to do it? And now you're using the debt you deliberately created as a as a predicate for cutting programs for poor and middle class people. And the answer yeah. will be yeah. Benghazi. Yeah. Uh, and they'll go chasing whatever the fuck Benghazi is going to be, that squirrel, uh, as opposed to holding their feet to the fire because holding, you know, afflicting the, what is it? Mm -hmm. Afflicting the powerful um, uh, nope. is not what the media nope. does anymore. Uh, what we do, because we are, Blue Gal. We're the liberal media. The hey, liberal media. Class, uh, you, one thing you forgot yes. is that George Soros bust in dead people in, into Alabama from Mississippi. For, don't don't he forget. He did. It's that that's that's how, how you that. explain it. Well, you he know. had to. Um, it, it's the plot of, um, I believe it's John Varley's <laughs> Millennium, which is a science fiction story about how plane crashes are secret this uh people from the future secretly swap out mm -hmm. the living from the dead in plane crashes in our time so they can take their genetic material into the future ah. and save the world uh so all plane crashes uh, are actually just full of replicant corpses who got burned in the fire and the actual living people see george soros has has used this technology to bring people from alternate timelines and bust them into Alabama to jack up the vote and somehow got them voter IDs because right. apparently in Alabama right. you got to have one of those. Yeah, you got to have so you gotta photo voter ID. Like and, yes, and, and they passed that so yeah. black people wouldn't vote. And oh dear, you know, so, but now the reason that Roy Moore lost is because people from Mississippi were busted in by George Soros. If you leave that part out, it's not and a complete lie. You need to have the protein with the carb, people. Remember that. Yes. And if if you look at that Frank Luntz focus group. Um, oh my gosh. Um, focus group where he took he pointed the lens of his camera into the, yeah, the yeah. ninth circle of hell and asked the, the losers there a whole bunch of questions. All they were doing is reciting mm -hmm. the magic mm -hmm. conjure words. And Paul say, yep. When in doubt say George Soros. Yep. When in doubt say Barack Obama is a Kenyan usurper. And they, this is just their fucking hey, livestock at this point. We got they some really beautiful do, letters yes. in the mail. Uh, over the course of... We did. Let me get off my soapbox <laughs> and, get, and get down on one knee and thank the Thank people you, people who support, who support us. us. And, appreciate and support the podcast they... work that we thank do. Thank you so we much. We do appreciate you so much. Should we tell them our secret? Oh. This is our second podcast this week? We've had recording issues with Skype, <laughs> and they're they're better now. So... Uh, and we, yeah. we're doing this. We're doing this. We're going to move on from at that. a time when we really don't have time to do this because we love you so much. And... <laughs> And I'm do. I'm not mad anymore because I have fun talking to Drift Glass on the Skype. So I do. As long as she doesn't have to <laughs> well, look at me. Well, the look I we gave you when time. I found out the recording didn't work <laughs> wasn't very pretty. I'll tell you that. <laughs> no, it was. Uh, I, I there there's a shadow of me on the wall behind me where I'm standing. Like, okay, I'm gonna get you a glass of really good <laughs> yeah. wine in about after an hour done. after we're done. Mama gets a really good glass of wine and any dinner she wants from anywhere yes. in town. Any whatever, whatever you want, list, whatever you want, darling. You, I'll drive to Fiori uh -huh. and get that good pulled uh -huh. pork you like. Okay. All righty. All right, so let's roll. We got these great letters from our, our listeners, and it's a uh, time of the year to be thankful, and we yes, have we plenty do. to be thankful for. And we're going to read. Uh, do you want to go first, I'll or do you want me to? First, yeah. Um, I got a right. lovely letter. Uh, speaking of the written word, this is handwritten uh, on a piece of paper with ink, and it says, Blue Gal and Drift Glass. Since I make my own delicious, fresh ground, strong black cup of coffee every morning and never buy one of them fancy, ridiculously priced coffee drinks from one of them coffee shops, I have no idea what a venti is. I just figure it's time to give you the equivalent of one of them fancy, ridiculously priced coffee drinks. <laughs> uh, yeah, yep. thank you. Uh, also, too, since I love the U.S. post office, don't have a credit card, and love the cursive written word, here is a personal check in a stamped envelope with a page of written words. As everyone else wow. who listens to Professional Left Podcast, I also love what you two do. Your positive yet righteously scathing attitudes and eloquent thinking tied to sinewy words. 
For you, I wish I were George Soros, although we are from the <laughs> same tribe. Here's to endless mm-hmm. pro-left podcasting and to cursive run-on sentences and to spiral notepads. Thank you very much. He is from out west, and we're very grateful to you for your letter and your do- and your generous donation. And, I, and I strongly suspect she's I, I strongly former suspect she's well educated. Yes. <laughs> yes. She was. She, yes. She yes. she likes yes. taking notes and uh, appreciates the written word. My handwriting, by the way, is <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, it really I is. Write in block. Uh, I I can write in really good block, fast block lettering because I used to be. True, truth to tell, yeah, a COBOL programmer. And they trained us uh, back when I was I was taking my training at a company. They would give us – they didn't let us touch the computers. Mm-hmm. They yep. would fill out forms, write your code in, and someone else will type it for you. And, you know, they let us type eventually. But that's where um, I learned how to write mm-hmm. fast yep. block letter form. So a little bit of history, a little bit of me for the show. Anyway, my letter okay. is from Ms. K. And Ms. K writes – This is my first email to you, but I've listened to you two for years every Saturday morning. Yours is the only podcast that I'm disappointed if I don't get to every week. Thank you. That is very sweet. I find you thoughtful, knowledgeable, funny, quirky, smart, and most of all, honest. You don't look like me. I'm taller than Blue Gal and shorter than Drift Glass. See my email address. And African American. But we are similar in what we value and how we view the world. Uh, I have a cat, uh, and I have a cat named Tej. Adorable. Uh, Many times you say things that I think out loud with colorful language, in quotes, (laughs) uh, from Drift Glass. And when we don't quite agree, I understand your point of view because you articulate it clearly. Thank you very much. Um, There are a lot of us educated, middle-ish, church-going, or at least God-believing, middle America, liberal folks who live in red states, me, not a large city in Texas, where we can't speak loudly for fear of losing standing in our Mm -hmm. community or even a job. We can't and we don't want to just move, but we can listen to you. Thanks. I have finally started to pay monthly for your time because you really help my sanity. Merry Christmas. Thank you very Ms. much, K. Ms. K. We appreciate you, too. Yep. And boy, do we uh, understand. So uh, this was a letter. This is one is from back in October, and I promised this person at the time that I would read it on the air at some point. And so I'm glad I went back and got it. Uh, it's, it's a little bit critical of us, but with love. And we are more than... Uh, Yes. Glad to have letters that are a little bit critical and with love. Uh, BG and DG, getting a little tired of your constant proletariat uprising straw man. I just watched Democrats vote for a $700 billion military budget and for Ajit Pai, who's the FCC guy. So you will forgive me if I demand better fucking representation. My choices shouldn't be between monsters and prostitutes. But hey, I am just an angry Bernie bro that can't let the 2016 primary go. I, <laughs> I know who my enemies are, but we deserve better representation. It would be nice if you appreciated that nuance. Still love you both. Some, are, some purity is required. We must hunt a few heretics mm-hmm. before we can gather converts. And I wrote back to him and said, I might read your letter on the air. Good points. The Hillary hate can stop yeah. now, though. She was the better choice of the two. And she's never running again. Right. So her haters won the last right. round. Boy, did they. And she, he wrote back to Same me here. and said, I love you guys. You are always free to use my words for good or bad. I had the luxury of voting in a very blue state, and I used it. Yep. But my vote yep. is earned from mm-hmm. here on out. Thanks again for doing what you do. And I wrote back to oh. him, and yeah. I well, said, and- thanks for recognizing the luxury. We love you, too. And I totally get where you're coming from. Most of the people who write to us live in red states or uh, are in blue communities within red states. I feel sorry for people just across the river in St. Louis who have to choose between Claire McCaskill and Satan. Uh, And, uh, you know, if you're in California and you want to move your party to the left, absolutely. We're behind you on that. We're behind you on that. Go for it, man. No, we really are. Go for it. Uh, But but here's the thing. That that letter represents exactly what our politics should be. That's right. A a friendly and passionate family And also, right. Among people of goodwill who respect each other. And also someone who is... Uh, arguing for values that we generally share, uh, understanding Mm -hmm. pragmatically that in some places you can push harder than in other places. And we saw that with the woman who wrote on Medium. I don't know if you saw this article, the woman who wrote on Medium that she was uh, against Doug Jones because he wasn't for a $15 minimum wage. 
you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah. she got really dragged on Twitter. Um, yeah. And, I and, hope so. Uh, uh, there are, you know, there are just places where you are choosing between Doug Jones, uh, who is a civil rights champion, and uh, and Satan, right. and that's it. Right. And those are your choices. Those are your choices. Yeah. Those are. I, I wish there were. You know, this. I, I've made the uh, analogy for the Republicans. Uh, who were rooting through the the icebox yeah, looking for yeah. the Reagan pie? Where's the Reagan cake? There is no Reagan cake. Well, I know there was no. It's there hasn't been any Reagan cake in there for thirty years. I'm pretty sure. And they just keep looking for an alternative yeah, that yeah. does not exist, and they keep pretending that it's there and it's not. We on the left have the luxury of creating alternatives like that within our mm-hmm. extremely broad, mm-hmm. extremely diverse yep. Yep. Uh, representation. And. And as long as our, uh, as long as we're pointing mm-hmm. at each other with pencils and we're focusing our Gatling right. guns where they belong, right. which is right. the people who are really trying to take this country down, I have no problem with that. This is exactly what well, our country should be. Well, and you talked about. Now, what was you, this well, person's you, name? What, what was that person's name? What was this person's uh, name? Yeah. Bob. Robert. Robert. Yeah. Bob, let me just say this. Robert, let me just say this. Come to the revolution, Robert. You're going to be one of my proletarian <laughs> generals. That was just for you, Robert. Just for you. Oh golly! Well, anyway, and and you know we've we've seen this kind of fight within our own party. Uh, yeah. It 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 shocked uh, a great many gay rights activists when they found out that not every African American civil rights activist was in their corner. <laughs> you know, initially. Yeah. Whoops. And and still, I mean, there's still there is still some resistance in that area. Um. So let's have the family fight. Let's have uh, a work toward economic justice for everybody. And uh, let's grow together. That you know, that's the thing. We're glad to do that. Yes, your turn, Drifas. My turn. Uh, this is from uh, Josh, who says it's not a donation. It's fair pay for years, all caps, of services rendered, services received. Plus, the more I give away, the less my ah! ex-wife will claim later. That's a new one. <laughs> so that you know, short and sweet and to the point, and we'll take it. It, yeah. it all spends, Josh. It's all green. It all. It, our, our furnace delights in your uh, desire to divert funds from your future <laughs> ex-wife problem. So. Yeah. And, and by the way, we, yeah. you know, we are we're working on multiple uh, strands of revenue gathering now. Thank you to all the new people on PayPal who have donate are now donating monthly. Yeah. We really appreciate that. People that have gone over to Patreon. Uh, and I'm still trying to figure out through Patreon how to write you back. And that's, I'm, I'm working on that, but yes, uh, right now, Patreon doesn't share your emails with me. So, um, well, people who have who've canceled their PayPal and and, and re upped it because PayPal won't, right, let, won't you let you just turn cha- unless you have the, a, an active account with PayPal, they won't let you just change it. People have canceled and right. and then up to, up but their donation. Thank you. People have taken the extra effort to figure out how to do that. Just it, yep. it's incredibly yep. decent of you. Incredibly nice. We really really appreciate it. We know that you know this is coming through the air and it's you know coming to you and you don't have to do this, but. The fact that you do and you want to and we get these beautiful letters from people saying how much, you know, yeah. we mean to each other. It's just incredibly touching. And we really uh, appreciate it. Finally, uh, I hope you can hear the sigh of relief that Driftless and I have over uh, being able almost uh, to pay uh, off our furnace and air conditioning bill, the 5600 yeah. that we are trying to raise on uh, the GoFundMe. All of these are linked at uh, proleftpod.com. Uh, we cannot thank you enough for helping us to pay off the biggest bill we have uh, at the GoFundMe. So thank you for that. Uh, whew. <laughs> that we're, we're over halfway there. Oh, in by the way, week. If, we're over halfway there. It's amazing. You guys are so generous and we're very grateful. If, if I if I may put out a request, and my sound editor can edit this out if she chooses. Um, if anyone out there among our fan base, uh, supporters of us, are really good at business management, <laughs> or <laughs> or prepa- or preparing corporate <laughs> documents. Or understands that side of the world, <laughs> the, yeah. drop us a line. You don't have to send us a check. You don't have to send us anything. Just we're looking to because we'd like to avoid, you know, minimize the number of mistakes. Yeah, we make and as we're we not move we're not joining, uh, you know, uh, club for growth. We're not talking about that. This is not no. that, but we are trying to ma- manage our finances and get out of debt and. Uh, m- manage uh the changes that are coming in the tax law uh we we believe in paying taxes uh for for we do. health education and welfare uh and and we're we not trying to do. get yes, away we with do. no taxes but um 
we feel that Donald Trump is trying to screw the gig economy, and we think that's wrong. So, and that's where we're at. That's where most of our income comes from, and we're trying to figure out uh, in an ethical way, uh, and in a mm-hmm. uh, a way that does not um, avoid taxation and is not. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. We're, our heart is in the right place. We're not doing yeah. this for selfish reasons. We just can't afford to lose more to taxes than we are losing right now from the standpoint of uh, there really being a war on blue states and a war on the gig economy and a war on people that are not them. So, uh, And, and yeah. of course, no one knows what's in this tax bill anyway So <laughs> at this point, so and we don't know if it's going right. to pass, but – uh, we're thinking about how can we manage this. And and one of the things that, that really frightens me about the future is, you know, corporations are people now. And does that mean that all people have to yes, become corporations are. in order to defend themselves from economic ruin uh, just because a bunch of, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to sound like yeah. a Republican I, and, here. That's my problem. I'm really not trying to avoid no, being taxed. No. Uh, I'm absolutely not trying to no, avoid but that. The, but the... The way they are right. polluting the right. ecosystem, um, where decent people pay yeah. pay taxes um, in an honorable way, it should be a yeah. it should be yeah, an honor exactly. to pay taxes. You're making enough to to build your society right. and build roads right. and bridges right. and pay for health care and pay for education. Yep. it should be a fucking honor yeah. to do that. That's that's yep. the way it used to be, and we want to we want that to be the country we live in. But there's so many uh, fragmentation exactly. devices being exactly. lobbed and into our universe. Yep, and by particularly. This tax bill. The, the fear that teachers have that, you know, a corporation can right. take staplers and um, toner and all of those things off of their taxes. And a teacher who buys those supplies for their students can't take it off. And, and you know, we have right. deducted paper and, you know, computer repair yeah. and those kind of things. And if they are saying, no, you you file your taxes as an individual, you can't do that anymore. Uh, that's not fair. <laughs> That's really not fair because no, this is a not. business uh, that we are working. You know, we don't do it for the income. We do it because we really love our listeners. Uh, so we have certainly volunteered our share of time to the cause over the past decade and a half. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, if you know this sort of thing and you want to volunteer some advice, we'd love to hear it. All right. Uh, I have certainly a letter would. here from Brooklyn. And this lady, lovely lady from Brooklyn sent a beautiful card and says, Dear Drift Glass and Blue Gal... I saw that Brett Stevens confession live. Also heard Michael Steele try to explain why the meat sticks are not listening to GOP leaders. She must go to like the 52nd Street Y or one of these speaking engagements and hear these things in New York City. The words Charlie Sykes, Rush Limbaugh, and Fox News never crossed Michael Steele's lips. Wow. Then I read about Amazon. Yeah. We lost our Amazon account. They just canceled it abruptly. Uh, So I'm sending some money to help. Be of good cheer. It's been announced that MSNBC has reversed the decision to dump Sam Cedar. Yes, they have. Good for them. Yes. You guys might think about calling into his podcast, Majority Report. You two could be regulars. (laughs) Yeah, in our spare time, we'll do that. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. I ran into him at one of the Netroots things. He he treated me very shabbily. So I'm not sure. No, he didn't. No. No. Sam Cedar's on our team, and we love Sam Cedar, and that's great. Yeah. Uh, it's a matter of finding the time to call in to the show when they're taking calls, and we have... I mean, I'm really having to say no to a lot of things just because I have teenagers I in my house who need my attention. I take enough attention away from them uh, to do my thing, uh, and... Uh, I've had to I've had to turn off Twitter on Sundays. I've had to turn off the internet mostly on Saturdays as well, just because my girls need me for another five years. So well, apparently you also volunteer <laughs> yes, for a lot I of things, do. and you also yeah. did and for I, a lot of. Causes. I had to drop all of my knitting this month because there's somebody having a church having their pancreas out due to cancer. So uh, we're someone asked me to make a prayer shawl for this person, and I said, okay, girls, you're going to wait for your hats until January because here's somebody who might not be here in January, you know, and they need a hug from us, Mm -hmm. a tangible thing that they can take with them to treatment, and we're going to provide that. And And it makes a huge difference, and my wife makes these things with her own two hands for that reason, And the people at the American Cancer Society fundraisers at church – know that I'm the person who will drop everything to do that because I care because I lost my mom to cancer and there's personal connection and there's um it's you know and now I'm gonna get choked now I'm gonna get have choked I mentioned, <laughs> have I mentioned have I mentioned how goddamn lucky <laughs> okay. I am all right she cries for all the, right the right, reasons, the smart one. she says 
I married the right one. I married the smart one. You know, if if you you didn't get that diamond ring for your birthday, I'd be upset. But you don't cry for those reasons. You cry for all the right reasons. All right. Do you have any other letters? Okay. I do. I have one more. It's from RV. And RV says, please accept this small donation from me on behalf of the Hope to Gain Financial Parity with James O'Keefe Foundation. (laughs) That's going to be our new new fake sponsor. Damn right. Yeah, we got a lot. We we blew our sponsors completely off this week, and and we'll get back to you next week. Uh, anyway, continuing with the email, in recognition of your contributions to speaking truth to power. Sorry, I couldn't send more, but I still had to bribe Santa this year so he wouldn't put reindeer excrement in my oh, stockings I again. <laughs> I do too. I, I I think it's not the reindeer, honey. Um, I think the tribe that rubbed shit yeah, in his hair has no. visited our home once or twice. Uh, enjoy your show and keep up the fight. Signed, Thank you very RV. much, RV. We deeply appreciate you. And yeah, that reindeer poop, you know, watch out for that. Yeah. All right. And we got a beautiful card from California. I hope you're okay with all of the fires going on out there. Uh, and uh, this is just a gorgeous card. It's that um, hand cut paper really delicate paper cutting and it opens up like a pop-up and is a christmas tree and it's just beautiful it's got animals and lovely lovely uh the christmas card says yuletide greetings thank you i especially appreciate that you are on every week by the way the obama's Uh. daughter's name is pronounced malia yes and i need to know that and (laughs) thank you for telling me that because yes i do need to know that and then we have one more christmas card uh very brief mk wrote us and said dear inspiring cyber friends merry christmas president stupid says i can say those words now Oh, we should we should also. I'd like to mention one thing uh, to uh, a person yeah. named Chris. Uh, oh, the stolen gosh, has arrived, all gone. <laughs> and it's it's almost all gone, man. It's Chris, it is not going to make it. Chris is active military and sends us stolen, yeah. and um, every year he sends this, and we love it. And uh, which, if you don't know what it is, well, you've wasted it's, your life. It's, um, it's even saying. better this year because uh, vegan daughter can't eat it, so there's more for us. <laughs> Right. It's got butter and like, uh, and more butter and butter. And I think you and I cut off yeah. about four servings for one slice. I think that's how yeah. we're eating it at yeah. a time. But yeah. oh my uh, gosh. Yeah. We are. And shamelessly. I'm not and I'm doing it like out the window <laughs> and just in front of the neighbor going, Look at what I got, man. And the lady who walks her dog has no idea why I'm doing that. But that's okay because I know that I'm bragging about the cool shit it's that I got delicious. sent by my friend who delicious. is way overseas. We love, we thank you. So it is much absolutely again. delicious. So annual, uh, the package has arrived. And uh, fest that arrives, mm-hmm. and we just adore it. It's mm-hmm. delicious. All right. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is Kitters. Kitters was a stray, but not anymore. Uh. <laughs> He is also known as Rip Cat Razor Toes. Yeah, yeah, we have one of those too. Oh, Lord. Don't walk by. Yeah. Don't yeah, walk by that cat here. tower. Yeah. We we scarfed a cat tower. I think I told people last week out of the, somebody else's trash and vacuumed it off, and it's in our living room now, and right by the front door. Actually, if you walk by, and he's in the top, our parkour kitty uh, Olive is in the top. He just will swipe you. You got to be very careful. So Rip Cat Razor Toes is this week's Internet Kitty. Go see him at our Facebook page and website. You can send your Internet Kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline or our Hulu guideline, whichever one you want. If you can afford some sort of monthly thing or weekly thing that you do, uh, think about that small amount that you use every month and donate to us. This is not charity. This is our job. Uh, It's now time to announce... The latest winner of our beautiful bracelet cuff from foxwise.biz. Check out our website to see how great they look. We have a link there to foxwise.biz. And the bracelet we're giving away says resist and has snowflakes on either side along with our URL. If you want to buy something from foxwise.biz, don't forget to use the coupon code DGBG2017 for 20% off anything, including custom orders. Uh, Mm -hmm. Foxwise.biz. We are running this contest as a way of saying thank you to our correspondents and donors. Our winner this week is Anthony in Portland, Oregon. He's a $5 a month donor. 
That's yeah. awesome. Wait, yeah. we appreciate those $5 mm-hmm. a month. You know, that gets us through our electric bill and a couple other things uh, these days. And it does. Uh, you guys are our bread and butter. Thank you. Uh, he will be receiving a cuff bracelet and a $10 gift card to one of my favorite charities, Donors Choose. And he can use that $10 gift card to donate to a school in his area in Portland, Oregon, or to a classroom across the country that's looking for help in an area that he supports. Uh, I often look up science fiction or autism or art supplies or basic (laughs) supplies if I'm looking for a teacher Uh who just needs, you know, paper and crayons. You You can look for someone who needs that or who is teaching life skills and needs toothbrushes for their disabled children. I, I really do look a lot often to donate to a special needs teacher because that's very close to my heart. Um, can, mm-hmm. can I mention one thing here, Blue Gal? Uh, there's a, 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 a neighborhood association that I belong to uh, that does a lot of good work in the neighborhood. It's one of those things that we volunteer for and we love very much. Apparently, they raised enough money this year to give a thousand dollars to each of the schools within oh their catchment, within their basement. So, so they gave uh, this morning. They had a big breakfast to celebrate, you know, what they did this year and all the volunteer stuff they've done. They'd op- they've opened up libraries at re- rehabbed um, public housing projects. They clean up the neighborhood. They make sure that you know people who move in businesses be- do it responsibly and and landscape and treat the neighborhood with respect. It's it's a classically good group of, of concerned citizens who get together to try to make their world better on a grassroots level. And they came up with enough cash this year to give $1,000 to wow. each of the schools in their area. And that's that's just awesome. It's just awesome. People at the grassroots yep. can do make so much difference with yep. such a little amount of money. And Donors Choose is just that sort and, of And one the of internet. the things they've also done is to try to get rid of the uh, payday loan people on the, yes. the air, in the area – uh, the business area that they mm-hmm. cover, and they've, but they've not only just tried to shut down or not replace payday lenders. They've actually uh, worked with organizations and and given uh, a megaphone to organizations that help people with debt relief and help them manage their money and help them yep. get out of this cycle of uh, one payday loan after another. And um, so, yes, people that are committed to making the world a better place, they may come from different parts of the political spectrum. Uh, but if you focus their attention on, yeah, we need to help this school, we need to help this make this sidewalk better and safer, uh, it would be great if we had a few trees in front of this business instead of just cement. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Yeah, it, and and redesigning, there's a goal to redesign the parking lot so that they drain more more um, responsibly and, yep. and save water. Uh, in and not flood and also recover the water and so forth. And so, I mean, there's just all kinds of great things going on. And in the middle of looking at Twitter mm-hmm. and seeing, you know, the the anniversary of Sandy Hook today and net, re- net neutrality going away and Donald Trump doing everything that he's doing, uh, it's easy to get depressed and hopeless and we need to not do that. Um, the, all of that, all that's going on, God is not in the wind. God is not in the storm. God is in the still small voice of truth. And that's where I'm trying to keep my thought. All right. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter. And thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties will forever believe that fuck Roy Moore and the horse he rode in on is a very fine joke. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the wine and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow and the switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2017 Drift Glass Blue Gal Podcast. Fake news, sparkle farters.